The University of Rhode Island 2020 Honors Colloquium Challenging Expectations Disability in the 21st Century presents The Americans with Disabilities Act 30th Anniversary Celebration Hi, I'm Congressman Jim Langevin, and I'm thrilled to join you in celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. The ADA recognized the inherent truth that people of all abilities have the right to live, work, and learn in their communities. After an accident left me paralyzed at the age of 16, I experienced the challenges of navigating our pre-ADA world in a wheelchair. And I've witnessed our country's transformation as the ADA has broken down countless barriers. We've come a long way. However, 30 years after the ADA became law, people with disabilities still face challenges accessing healthcare, transportation systems, employment opportunities, and barrier-free housing. Our work towards a more inclusive future is not done until we fully empower all people to share their talents with the world. And I am proud to continue fighting for disability rights until that day comes. It was just three decades ago, on July 26, 1990, that the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, was signed into law, thereby promising to right the wrongs of the nation's history of failing to grant equal opportunity for individuals living with a disability. Based on the directives set forth in the ADA, there have been substantial transformations seen in all sectors of society. Universal design has been adopted, leading to academic institutions, government buildings, and retail entities, among others, investing in inclusive models like wheelchair ramps and accessible communications. This standard implemented by the ADA has positively impacted society at large, as anyone and everyone is able to benefit from these measures aimed at breaking the barriers of exclusion and discrimination. After all, who hasn't benefited from an accessible restroom or alternate formatting of text, such as larger print or even an audio recording? As someone who does not live with a disability, I know that features present in society today that I take advantage of, like push button door switches or closed captioning, are something that can be attributed to this monumental law. There should be no mistake, however, that there is plenty more progress to be achieved in order to see that the disabled community is afforded the equity embodied within the spirit of the ADA. One area of improvement should focus on the enforcement of national standards concerning equal opportunity, as laid out in the ADA. As well, the deconstruction of the stigma that still affects the disabled community must be addressed through various means, such as media coverage, education, and the aforementioned embrace of universal design. Universal design achieved through the ADA makes it easier for me to get around certain places, like when I'm at the library and have a lot of books. The ramps help me when there's inclement weather and I can't hold on to the handrails on the stairs, and the automatic door opener helps me open the door without dropping my books everywhere. Even though at the moment I do not need to use these accommodations every day, when I do need to use them, they make my life easier, and I'm grateful for them. My local town manager, Michael Boynton, was diagnosed with acute transverse myelitis 41 years ago and went from a completely able-bodied 12-year-old to a full quadriplegic in just a few hours. Mr. Boynton had been in a wheelchair in a time before the ADA and after, and although there have been some improvements like curb cutouts and elevators, on a scale of 0 being no improvement and 10 being perfect, he would rate the post-ADA world a 4 or a 5. As a member of the International City and County Management Association, disability was never mentioned in their talk on diversity and inclusion. Out of 4,000 members, less than 5 had visible disabilities, and out of 300 managers, only 2 had visible disabilities. He says, if we're going to have a fully comprehensive conversation for diversity and inclusion, then disability needs to take a higher rank in the conversation. Although the ADA has made some improvements to public buildings, some still aren't up to par with regulations, or if they are, they're not fostering a welcoming environment to those that need to use them. The town hall and the town over for Mr. Boynton has only one accessible parking spot and a steep hill to the rest of the lot. One needs to walk all the way down and around the building to get to the side entrance ramp, and during the winter, the ramp isn't accessible anymore because of inadequate snow removal, and it's slippery, so even those without mobility equipment will struggle. The ADA has done a lot of things to help those with and without disabilities, but there is still so much more to be done. 
By embracing the social model of disability and encouraging universal design policies, we can start fostering a more welcoming environment and open the door to everyone. As we approach the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, it is important to understand the pivotal role it has had in the lives of many. Divided in titles, the Act works to abolish discrimination in the areas of public accommodations, governmental programs, employment, and public transportation. The ADA has impacted the quality of life for those with disabilities by making accommodation more of a priority in the minds of others. This forces one to understand the constructional barriers that withhold someone from attaining their dreams and equal opportunities. People with disabilities face obstacles that many temporarily abled individuals do not. For example, instituting ramps, even sidewalks with cuts and elevators. The lives of those who have been affected by disability prior to the passing of the ADA was extremely difficult. It was no longer just the stigma of being born with a disability in America, rather it became a war of how to live in an environment built against your very existence. Since the passing of the ADA, those with disabilities are able to compete in an ever-changing world. The ADA has given them the opportunity to achieve greatness if followed accordingly. Through local legislation, we as a community need to make sure we are always being inclusive of those with disabilities in following the declarations of the ADA, not only because it is a law, but because we understand the importance of human life. The ADA protects many things when it comes to disability rights. That includes public accommodations like this handicapped parking spot. Although public accommodations like this are nice, there still is a lot of discrimination towards people with disabilities. For the ADA to be the monumental step it appears to be, it needs to be more strictly enforced. With working and taking classes from home becoming our new normal, there may actually be a silver lining to the pandemic. Even with the ADA, discrimination, especially in hiring practices, is still a really big problem. Now that employers know it's possible to work from home and still be productive because of the pandemic, hopefully there will be less discrimination towards people with disabilities who need accommodations like working from home. And even though this benefit isn't from the ADA directly, it is still, like the ADA, a step in the right direction. Happy birthday, ADA. It really is amazing to see just how much has improved in the 30 years that the ADA has existed. For one, being a basis of legal protection for those with disabilities, but also improving society for people with and without disabilities, and ideas such as universal design and accessibility. I personally have been affected by the ADA. I have a processing disability and receive accommodations from URI's Disability Service Center. And it really has improved my success in school and as well as my confidence in my own abilities. And while a lot has improved in these 30 years, we can only go further. Disability rights doesn't end with the ADA and it requires social change as well, especially on the local level. From better representation of disabilities in the media, to better education about disabilities, to further improve accessibility, it's going to require a combined effort of people who care. And seeing all the support of, of people with disabilities, I believe we can The ADA get. is a civil rights law that prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities in all areas of public life. The ADA has had a very positive impact on our world in making it a model of universal design, or in other words, accessible to all people regardless of age, disability, or any other factors. Some of these changes include ramps, automatic doors, elevators, closed captioning on TV programs, and also providing a lot of employment opportunities for people living with a disability. I have firsthand seen the effects of the ADA on a family member involved in a skiing accident who became wheelchair bound. One of his biggest challenges is with restaurants. Narrow walkways and small tables packed tightly together often make it very inaccessible to his motorized wheelchair. Along with that, he sometimes will not even receive a menu from the hostess, which is a clear example of the stigma surrounding disability. He also expressed that people will be visibly frustrated with his motorized wheelchair if he is not moving at the same pace as they would like. These are just some examples of how the ADA has impacted his life in the sense that it does still need improvement. I believe one of the biggest flaws of the ADA is that there is not a way to enforce and regulate the rules for accessibility. Personally, the high school I attended was known to not be wheelchair accessible with no elevators and only stairway entrances into the school. Although it was a private high school, this is a perfect example of change that needs to happen because denying a person the right to an education based off of the fact of a disability is unjust. By educating not only the youth but members of every generation, 
we can make this world a better and more accessible place to live in through open conversations about increasing accessibility along with ending the stigma surrounding disability. The ADA has done great work in our society but still has a long way to go. It is important to understand that our world is constantly changing and we need to adapt to make this world accessible to everyone. The ADA has had a major impact on the quality of our communities and businesses. It has also created change for a safe and accessible environment for people living with disabilities. From creating bigger doorways for wheelchairs or mobility assistance to demanding disability-friendly medical exam tables, the vast improvements made by the ADA has changed the lives of so many Americans. These improvements reach far beyond just accessibility for people with visible disabilities. We see menus and door signs that include braille to assist the blind or visually impaired community. More programs in broadcasting provide sign language interpreters and closed captioning. For people like me with learning disabilities, the ADA has allowed me to better achieve an education that is fair and provides the same amount of opportunities as those who are not disabled. The ADA has also improved awareness and acceptance, which promotes an accessible and positive environment for disabilities. Despite these vast and incredible improvements, there is still much that needs to be done for the improvement of accessibility for those individuals with a disability. One that stands out is an equal access access to sex and reproductive education, which is not prioritized in most educational systems for people with visible disabilities, as well as a bigger emphasis on equal and fair medical treatments and practices for people with a disability, which has recently been called into question concerning treatment for those individuals who have caught COVID-19. The ADA has made leaps and bounds of improvement for the disability community, but I'm eager to see what the future holds for improvements and how we can better our communities. The ADA helped to improve accommodations of pe for people with disabilities in America. And I feel that it has also helped improve societal attitudes in this country towards people with disabilities. And the ADA has helped me in particular because dis learning disabilities like mine are included and protected under the ADA and it led to further legislation such as IDEA 2004, which introduced the individualized education plan that I have been using since grade school for things like sitting up front and in-person classes to help me focus better and having extra time in quizzes and tests in school. And I found in my research of the history of the ADA that a lot of Congress people working on it were concerned that it was um, too, gonna be too costly or was gonna be too much work. So that's why it's broad rather than specific. And I think that this is really a hindrance even today. I'm not successful in school in spite of my disability. I'm successful because I was able to get accommodations for it that allowed me to succeed such as those from the ADA and IDEA 2004. To celebrate the 30th anniversary, I would like to personally thank the ADA for advocating for my rights. I had to go through a really long process of being diagnosed with a chronic immune system disease in high school, and I ended up exceeding the amount of absences allowed to graduate due to my medical condition. Thankfully, the ADA helped advocate for me by providing me with a 504 plan, which was able to sponge all of my absences due to my medical condition. This goes to show that the ADA is in place to protect everyone. Anyone is susceptible to developing a disability, so the stigma surrounding disability is dangerous and further strengthens the barriers that are already in place. The ADA is able to advocate and protect people's civil rights and provide equal access in these scenarios. We need to keep amplifying people's voices to hear their stories and to join in their fight for equality. Platforms for people with disabilities are so important in educating able-bodied people, lessening the stigma, and providing a larger community where people can feel empowered. We celebrate 30 years of the ADA and we continue fighting for accessibility. The ADA has helped create a world that is more accessible and inclusive of people with all types of abilities. It has helped level the playing field for those with disabilities who are trying to navigate within a world that was largely built for able-bodied people. To combat this, universal design is an example of something that has been pushed since the ADA has been approved. Even though I do not have a disability, for many years I was in a very restricted back brace, which greatly limited my mobility and my tolerance for pain. I firsthand saw how things like ramps and elevators were lifesavers for my pain, and how unbearable my pain became when they weren't there for me to use. However, the difference is I had that choice to make, and I did recover from my injuries. Many people do not have this choice, and no one should ever have to sacrifice their comfort. 
I believe that accessibility needs to be better enforced and greatly expanded. I encourage people to look within their own communities first as a place to start. For example, in my community here at URI, I can think of many things that need to be improved. Many of the automatic door openers don't work. Many of our dorms and suites are not really wheelchair accessible, and our professors do not always use microphones when they lecture. Even though this amazing colloquium is run here at URI, our community isn't perfect. And that's okay because no community is going to be perfect, but we have to start somewhere. We have to all hold our communities accountable and speak up when we see something that isn't right. Let the 30th anniversary of the ADA be a reminder to keep pushing, keep advocating, because change is an ongoing process. As a teacher's aide, I work very closely with a little boy who is in a wheelchair. His disability limits what he can and can't do. Thankfully, the school that I work at has a universal design allowing for the same experience for all students and wheelchair and a wheelchair accessible bus to bring him to and from the school and to and from after school activities. These accommodations allow for equal accessibility for all students to all programs and services offered at my school. Without the ADA's guidelines put in place regarding the titles of services and public accommodations, the inclusion of this little boy would not have been possible. I am a L1, L2 level spinal injury. I used to be a T12 level injury. I don't have a complete break. I have partial paraplegia, which leaves me um, using using a wheelchair. I used to use crutches, lost strand crutches or Canadian crutches and braces. So the ADA plays a very important role in my life and it has played a very important role in my life. The ADA had just been introduced because uh, I went to school in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, I went to Rick, Rhode Island College and parking was a huge issue. Um, I was on a parking committee when I was at Rick and the resistance we, we received from the state, from faculty members who were on this committee, um, they just didn't want to do a lot in terms of that. They, they viewed it as, well, there's not enough of you out there for us to actually enforce the law uh, to make the spaces legal. You know, and that's just parking. That's what I had to deal with, mostly parking. Now, how does the ADA affect my life? Um, it's given me a lot, a lot of independence. You know, I have, uh, I don't have to rely on people. When I suffered my injury when I was 18, I had to rely on a lot of folks to get me around. So with the ADA, you know, parking became easier for me. It plays a big role in employment as well. You know, I was fortunate. I have a job here at West Warwick High School. They built this wing in 97, you know, and it's, it's wide enough. So 97 was after the ADA. Uh, there's not, not all buildings have, have easy access in most public buildings by law, they're supposed to. In terms of equipment too, adaptable equipment, I now have a van with a ramp um, and I've always had hand controls, but making things accessible like that, you know, the ADA has been very helpful as far as spreading information about where to get things. When purchasing a car, they have a program for modifications for hand controls. So, you know, the ADA has helped with that, you know. So most car manufacturers, if you purchase new, they will pay $1,000 to install hand controls. And that's what affects me is parking, restrooms, accessibility. So we've come a long way in the past 30 some years. Shinobians with Disabilities Act has impacted our family. For Michael, the two main areas are access to medical appointments and to education so that he can get to school. He, when he is doing school in person, he takes a mini bus where they have a handicap lift. Um, when we go to medical appointments, they are either on the first floor or on a floor that's accessible um, by an elevator. Um, the handicap placard that we use allows us to park a little bit closer and sometimes in a safer spot. So particularly when there's um, inclement weather, typically the handicap spots are cleared and they're a little bit closer to where we need to go. 
Um, I think when I first became acutely aware of the need for accessibility was um, when we were, in addition to taking care of Michael, caring for my father-in-law who um, used a walker and was blind. And I would often approach doorways and places that looked as if they were accessible but might not have been. And so as an able-bodied person, I've tried to use my leverage to advocate for not only my family members, Michael and my father-in-law when he was alive, um, but for others who might not be able to access um, sometimes different events. We've been to, to outdoor events that were not accessible and, um, and I've had to um, speak on behalf of Michael or my father-in-law. Um, so I do think there is a ways to go because for those of us who do not have a disabled member of their family, it's really hard to put yourself in that person's shoes unless you sort of walk the walk with them. Um, so I think just in terms of even education, it, starting in the elementary level, um, exposing kids to others who may not be typically developing allows them to develop not only um, empathy, but just understanding. And hopefully when they grow up, they can advocate for others who might not be able to access the same resources as they. The ADA has impacted my quality of life um, with transportation from and how I get to to work in my program. My program was Project Growth. It was a program to help disabled kids like me to like get a job and do life stuff, like life skills. We used uh, public transportation to get from and to the school and to work. Um, I work at Dollar Tree. I got trained for a week or so, maybe less than a week. They trained me to get everything into my head and I had to watch videos and a quiz online. The ability to get, to have me get a job let me have money to do more things and to have more freedom and to get more things that I want. I'm Jira Gold. I'm 19 years old and I'm almost completely blind. Which, you know, I live in a world which it's meant for sighted people. It's very hard to navigate places. It's very hard to do the same things other people do. And something like the EDA has had a huge impact on my life already because um, I'll give you some different examples. You know, voting is accessible. ATMs, they have earphone jacks so I can listen to spoken instruction. Even something like Netflix has audio description as an option where what's happening in the movie will be described to me. I mean, small things like that, they happen because laws are put in place, because people are made more aware and told, you know, I think a lot of it is it's difficult for people who aren't educated about this sort of thing to realize how hard it is, but when you have something that's set in stone, when they write laws protecting my needs, my rights in this world, it's a real game changer. And I do think that, you know, with everything, there's always room for improvement, but the ADA is one step in the right direction, and, you know, eventually, 
maybe it really be, it will be a world that I can navigate just as easily as everyone else. And having laws to help get me what I need is the first step. Hi, my name is Deanne Gagney. I was born in 1972 with a disability that required me to use a wheelchair. Back then, most public, most public buildings was not, were not accessible. When I wanted to get into places, I had to rely on family fr and friends to get me into stores and restaurants. Usually by having to lift my wheelchair up, me and my wheelchair up the steps. The ADA gave me the ability to get into places that everyone else had already had access to. It allowed me to go to places by myself with dignity. Years later, the ADA allowed me to go to college, earn a degree in social work, and eventually helped me get a job and keep a job. With, of course, a reasonable accommodation. With the passing of the ADA, it gave me and many other people with disabilities the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. The Americans with Disabilities Act has affected my life as well as the lives of many of my students in such a positive way. And to start, I was recently diagnosed with ADHD. And growing up, I always knew I had some form of ADHD as it was extremely difficult for me to pay attention unless it involved running around in a sport type setting. Um, it was also very difficult for me to excel at school without the help of a parent. I couldn't sit still or focus on an assignment um, or even read a book for more than a few minutes without having to get up and walk around and take that break. Um, back then, unfortunately, there was a particular stereotype for having ADHD, and many thought that I did not fit that category. Um, the American with Disabilities Act helped bring out more information and understandings of disabilities to break those stereotypes and to bring more understanding and awareness. Um, the ADA allowed for me to advocate for myself and get the help I needed while at school and at work. Now, fast forward to 2020, I'm working with younger children in a school setting. The Americans with Disabilities Act allowed for some of my students, even as young as three years of age, to be evaluated by the state for various mental and cognitive disabilities. They were awarded the help that they need to be able to thrive in a general education setting. It has also brought awareness to the other children as well as the teachers in our classrooms and has made it easier for those students to transition and integrate into the class itself. Um, I am so incredibly grateful for the ADA and all the positivity that it brings. When I think of ADA as a mother of a child with special needs, a young child, he's only seven years old, um, I think of how it can help you in that, um, for example, my son's school, my son's in a wheelchair and his school is a two level school and they have an elevator, but the rest of the building is stairs. And when the elevator wasn't working, um, that was an issue for my son to be able to get to specials and other things. And once I found out he wasn't able to join his class, I brought up how you're not ADA compliant and then suddenly everyone was on top of it and trying to get it resolved as soon as possible so in that way it's an advocate for yourself if you know about it to bring up to schools when you have issues like that um, another thing I think of when I think of ADA compliant is how they're a little outdated um, one thing I noticed um, being in special needs groups on Facebook and other groups is that a lot of us parents are complaining about the same thing and that's accessibility when it comes to restrooms. Uh, a lot of our children who then grow into adults one day need to have a proper changing area. Not all children um, can use the toilet by themselves and maybe need diapers and they might need that as adults also. And if you go into bathrooms, they typically just have changing tables for infants. And my child's 50 pounds now, and myself, like a lot of other parents, we have to change on the floor or in our cars. 
Um, you know, and as they get older, they have the right to privacy just like everyone else in the restroom. And when they're adults, what are they going to do then? Um, you're going to put a grown man on the floor to change? It doesn't seem like that's right to them as a person. So um, I think ADA needs to uh, be enforced more, and I think they need to update more because I'm assuming that it is compliant how it is, but that's just not realistic of what it's like when you have significant uh, special needs that are physical and restricting you for just, you know, regular day-to-day -day activities, such as using the restroom. So I had an automobile accident and um, it left me handicapped with um, in, in a wheelchair. Um, through rehab and whatever, I was able to advance and be able to eventually experience life again on crutches and up high, higher, and then later to discard the crutches and become somewhat normal. I found when I was wearing equipment braces on my body, um, I went to go shopping and found that it was very difficult to get between the racks of clothing. There were no aisles. They were round racks that just blended one into the other to the other, and I couldn't get very deep into the department to find what I was looking for. I would get clothing in my face <laughs> and clothing across my arms, knocked bags out of, out of my hands that I was carrying. It was just extremely difficult to navigate. It made me feel like less than a person, that I wasn't important enough for them to separate the racks so I could enjoy the process of shopping. Once I was on crutches, I had the freedom to move around in those departments and I felt like a human being again. And I wasn't getting shopping bags in the face and I wasn't getting clothing in my face because I was at a stand-up height. If they met the standards of the ADA, I probably wouldn't have had a problem. I would have been able to go through there. Grace. My name is Kyla and I am the uh, administrator for a residential home for four adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities. The accessibility, physical accessibility piece of the ADA um, is not always enforced. Uh, enforcement is rare and scattered and it's been 30 years since that was passed and a lot of people just they know they're supposed to try to be accessible, um, but they new businesses don't necessarily uh, take the time to understand or or learn the value in making their business accessible. Our folks that we support want to be a part of their community. They want to shop. They want to go to plays. They want to go on boat rides, um, and the number of times they still come up against barriers. Um, because of the 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 way the ADA is written for businesses to be able to not become accessible because of cost is still very high. An animal sanctuary in the state um, recently made their grounds much more wheelchair friendly um, and added um, some uh, auditory devices and braille to their exhibits and word spread like wildfire in the disability the ADA has personally affected my life because I have a di learning disability myself since I was born and struggled in school. Being offered different opportunities to learn throughout all my years of high school from preschool to high school has personally helped me succeed to the fullest capability. Because of the signing of the ADA, I personally would not be where I am today at the University of Rhode Island in college. I do not know anyone uh, in my family who suffers from a dis disability besides myself, uh, but many of my friends who I've met in class also suffer from the same learning disability that I do. Uh, my friend, uh, my best friend and I both uh, would help each other on schoolwork to make sure that we both understand and we still call each other to this day as we we're both in different colleges when we need help or don't understand something. What I believe what still needs to be done on a local level uh, is to not single out students with disabilities. I know many students being single, uh, being called out uh, for having a disability in high school by teachers because they don't understand something uh, the teacher said. This happened many times uh, throughout high school, middle school, and even before that when teachers would get frustrated because we did not understand what the teacher was asking us because of our learning disability. I feel as if teachers knew more about each student and what disability they had, uh, the teacher wouldn't feel frustrated when they wouldn't be able, when the student wouldn't be able to answer what the teacher asked them. On a national level, I believe uh, everyone needs to be accepting for who we are 
and uh, just that we are like everyone else and try harder to succeed. Many people think of us as different because of a learning disability, but we are all the same. For me, the ADA has a major impact in my life. In my opinion, the quality of life for our society as a whole has improved because of ADA. For me personally, I have dyslexia. <clears throat> I've lived with dyslexia for like all of my life and I've struggled throughout school, but because of this act, I was protected and helped throughout school and got extra help and tutoring. And I took summer classes and stuff to help me with my dyslexia. And it's all because of ADA. Without this law being passed into law in 1990, I wouldn't be able to uh, have succeeded and gotten to college without it being passed into law. Hi, my name is Miranda Oakley, and I'm a member of the graduating class of 2016. While some great experiences came out of my time at URI, I also ran into some obstacles on campus as a woman who is completely blind. Many of my challenges came from navigating campus every day. It's wonderful that URI is open to improving the design of the university, and here's how I can help. It would help students who are blind or who have low vision if there were tactile markings on sidewalks and in hallways to improve navigation. It would be my pleasure to collaborate on an interactive URI specific app. This app could provide students who are blind or who have low vision with verbal instruction as well as audible tones to improve traveling. This could help students at the campus bus stop, Ramstan in the dining halls, as well as locating buildings and finding classes. Let's get creative and think big together. I work as a direct support professional for multiple adults with autism. I have seen firsthand that some of these individuals are more than capable of entering the workforce. I've also helped my clients apply to jobs and have heard a number of success stories. One of our individuals has been working at a gas station and food store in Pennsylvania called Sheets for the past seven years. She recently got promoted to assistant manager, which is an incredible milestone that I don't think would have happened if it wasn't for the ADA. At a local level, I think that we need to do a better job of educating students, teachers, and employees, and really just the general public on what the ADA is and how the able-bodied community could work to support it. I know that in class, we've talked about some examples of how people thoughtlessly make the lives of individuals with disabilities more difficult, like pulling your car too far up so that it cuts off part of the sidewalk or shoveling snow into the sidewalk so that wheelchairs are unable to get through. I will admit that these are things I never thought about until they were mentioned in class. So I think that raising awareness within our community is really the first step in improving accessibility for individuals with disabilities. I think that on a national level, we should be writing to our governors, senators, and representatives about these issues because these leaders are a direct link to Washington and can ultimately help to get these laws passed. So most people will think that DDA has, the, has only impacted people with disabilities, but in fact, that is not true. Such as the EDA work doesn't finish here. In fact, it has impacted the quality of life for the entire society, and therefore every individual has achieved an outcome out of this law. So DDA has helped to have full participation, inclusion, and the equality of opportunity for American with Americans with disabilities. Nevertheless, there is still a lot of margin to improve, such as there is communication, transportation, and social contacting issues. Such an example is connected to my cousin when he couldn't assist my graduation due to accessibility issues. Also, there are still people which don't accept people with disabilities. And that has to really, really change by having fair treatment between everyone, so non-discrimination. Also making products, communication, and the physical environment more usable by as many people as possible. So this is according to the universal design. Furthermore, I know there's a lot of work done and we are doing a great job, but the work has to continue. We need to unite all people together and make people with disabilities have a life they can remember. Although the ADA greatly improved life for millions of Americans living with a disability, there are still areas that need to be improved. It needs to be better enforced in all places. There are many places that meet the minimum accessibility guidelines but realistically aren't. One of the best ways to change this is through more education about the ADA and disability in general. 
It is very important that we as students try our best to educate people and advocate for change. The ADA has impacted my life as an able-bodied person because I am now more aware of how I can be an ally to people with a disability. As a member of society, I would never want to purposely exclude anyone from being an active member of public life by never making small changes to allow for inclusion. As able-bodied people work towards educating ourselves and having empathy and understanding, we can all grow into better members of society. As a community member, I want the same opportunities and resources available to me to be available to everyone else. Able-bodied people are not the default setting on life, but rather just one version of the way we can live. By making reasonable accommodations, the ADA has helped create a bridge for people with disabilities to become active members in public life. This class alone is a clear indicator that we as a society were not learning enough about the inclusion of people with disabilities. The number of topics that we've discussed many times were the first times I had heard about them in an educational setting as a senior in college. By educating our future leaders and future parents and future members of society, this can lead to further inclusion possibilities and more representation of disability in our communities, both locally and nationally. Education and empathy may be the key to improving accessibility for those living with a disability. At a local and national level, places should be more open to improving accessibility and making sure their accessibility features are operating correctly. For example, sometimes the automatic doors in my dorm at URI aren't always working. These simple accommodations show respect and inclusion for people with disabilities in our community. Overall, the ADA has been extremely successful, but society needs to follow the rules and be more accepting of the 20% of our population with a disability in order for it to be even more successful in the next 30 years and the future beyond that. One of the major ways the ADA has affected society as a whole is with the incorporation of universal design. Universal design is the concept of making things more accessible for everybody without necessarily having to build a completely new structure. Buildings that are made more accessible for those living with disabilities are also made more accessible for everybody as well. For example, incorporating a gradually inclining or declining ramp as opposed to stairs not only benefits those using wheelchairs but also families pushing strollers. Medical tables that can be adjusted help pregnant women avoid injury or strain when trying to receive medical treatment, and also allows individuals with disabilities to receive the proper care that they need. The ADA and the incorporation of universal design has improved the quality of life for many, those living with disabilities or not. Family members of mine living with disabilities have expressed how much of a positive impact the ADA has had on their lives. However, there's still work to be done to further improve accessibility for these individuals. Many doctor's offices and hospitals still have yet to make their equipment completely accessible for patients with disabilities, putting continuous strain and risk on these patients as they try to receive healthcare treatments. Certain jobs and companies and explicitly discriminate against people with disabilities with limited sick days and positions that make it difficult for them to maintain a career. Local and national changes can be made to help advance accessibility for individuals with disabilities if we continue to use our voice and privilege to address what needs to be done and act as advocates for the disabled community. Quite honestly, prior to this course, I've had little to no experience working with or studying the disability community. As a 21-year-old, this is very disappointing, truly because there are nearly 61 million people with disabilities in America. So when I'm asked how the ADA has impacted my life, I really need to take a step back and think about it. In my opinion, we live in a very self-serving world. What I mean by this is when people are feeling lazy on a cold winter day and do not want to walk from a faraway spot in the grocery store parking lot, they park in the handicapped positions without thinking twice about who this will affect. And I myself have fallen into similar traps. I have more than once entered the bathroom and gone straight to the handicapped stall, not considering what would happen if an individual with a wheelchair came in and needed the designated space. While these two scenarios seem so minute, they drastically impact the lives of others. And yes, we can thank the ADA for proposing such codes and regulations, but what is the point if everyday people are abusing the system? And yes, universal design is even better to think about as its aim is to create safer, easier, and more user-friendly places for people. Yet, it is only beneficial if we consider who needs this access accessibility most. Moreover, it is important to shine light on the positive stories families have been able to write thanks to the ADA. For instance, a close family friend of mine whom I have had the pleasure of attending grades K through 12 with is on the autism spectrum. Aside from always making everyone in the room laugh and smile, he generally made my small town a better place. And if my friend was born more than 30 years ago, it would have been almost forbidden for him to attend a public school. He never would have been given the chance to learn how to read or write. 
but thanks to the ADA, new opportunities for individuals with intellectual disabilities via the educational world have been opened and has shown society that people with different abilities are successful and contributing members in our communities. Thus, it is our responsibility to hold our friends and family accountable in regards to upholding the Americans with Disability Act. This begins with the construction of educational programs at the local or even national level, informing the public on all things disability related. Whether it's through classes or health fairs, I understand teaching is an abstract concept. However, it seems to be the only way our country can be introduced to these notions. We need to be allies for the disabled community. We need to show our support. Because at the end of the day, if accessibility is not an issue for you and I, it should not be an issue for others as well. While the ADA marks a landmark achievement for disability rights, it does not signify a resolve to issues of discrimination, nor does it eliminate the threat to autonomy people with disability face. As we celebrate the victories won in the adoption of the ADA 30 years ago, we must not allow a triumph of history to obscure the reality of today in which the fight for disability rights continues. Activists today focus most of their efforts on issues of implementation and enforcement of ADA mandates, specifically as they relate to equal opportunity and employment, access to health care, and accessible housing. The ADA provides a legal foothold, but in order for equality and inclusion to be truly achieved, further education and destigmatization of disability are necessary. Furthermore, reformations to the accessibility framework are essential to ensure that accommodations do not maintain the marginalization and segregation of people with disabilities. So the ADA has definitely directly affected my life, um, but not necessarily because I need accommodations, but because its accommodations help everyone. Um, I use the sidewalk cutouts when I am rolling something. I watch movies and TV with closed captioning. And these were all things that were created and put into this world because they help people with disabilities, but they also help everyone else um, around them. And that's a huge part of universal des design. Um, and so regardless of your level of ability, having an accessible world is incredibly important. Um, and so like the biggest pushback that I've really seen um, is the work and the costs that go into updating buildings to uh, be universally accessible. But building new buildings, there's no extra cost to make them accessible. You plan that in from the start. And updating old buildings increases their value, increases their longevity, and it creates jobs by having there be work and updates for people to do. And so on both a local and a national level, I think these advantages really need to be shown a lot more than all these perceived detriments of cost and such. Um, and I think on a global scale, we really need a greater push for compassion and empathy um, because people do not see the tangible benefits of helping others to succeed. Um, and I wanted to talk about um, this anthropologist, um, Margaret Mead, who said that the first sign of civilization um, it wasn't tools or weapons, it wasn't agriculture, standing structures, anything that you would think of. It's a fossil of a healed femur. Femur is a very large bone in the body. If it breaks um, in, an animal, in the animal world, that animal is dead. Um, it takes far too long for them to recover and they wouldn't be able to protect themselves in that time. But a healed femur shows that someone cared for the person whose leg was broken and they helped protect and feed them for the time that it took to recover. And so that is the first sign of civilization. People willing to help each other, because that's what civilization is about. To conclude, major areas of improvement for equality for people with disabilities includes requiring equal opportunities in employment, greater access to health care, and more accessible housing for persons with disabilities. It is extremely important for an emphasis to be placed by both local and national governments on providing people with disabilities opportunities to work if they choose, as well as providing greater access to health care so their health can be taken care of. Accessible housing is also extremely important, and policies should be put in place at a national and local level to provide persons with disabilities a appropriate housing that fulfill their wants and needs. As another 30 years pass, it is with the greatest hope that not only Americans living with disabilities, but the international disabled community will be able to live in a world that is universally fit for people of all backgrounds.